Hey, this is Phil Galfon, and I'm gonna do some Q&A now. I have trouble getting myself to play aggressively and make bluffs that I know I should make. How can I overcome that? Overcoming our natural tendencies uh, is really challenging, uh, both in life and in poker. And I think that if you're aware of the fact that that you're making mistakes in a certain way, that's step one, and it's a big step. Um, a lot of people are unaware. They just make the plays that they want to make emotionally, and they justify it logically. So let's say, you know, I'm afraid to bluff the river uh, like you, and I get into this spot where, you know, maybe I should bluff, maybe I shouldn't, and my, my body or my brain or some combination tells me I don't, I don't want to do this. And so I, th I think, oh, well, you know what? He's not going to believe me. Or you know what? Um, she seems like she has a really strong hand here. I shouldn't go for it. Um, a lot of people make up excuses and they believe them uh, for why they don't want to make plays. So um, actually this specific type of tendency is one that I, is the one that I personally have dealt with, uh, you know, over my years as a poker player. It was hard for me to get myself to bluff enough. It was hard for me to get myself to play aggressively enough. It's always been really easy for me to be on the river facing a huge bet and having a weak hand and making a hero call, um, but put myself in the reverse spot where I have a weak hand and uh, I'm deciding if I should bluff or not. I always struggled to make myself do it. Now, I could probably go on as to, um, you know, why my mind works that way. And, and I've thought about it a lot um, in terms of things like, you know, equating, you know, making a big bluff to in real life, kind of um, really putting yourself out there or um, like making a really confident and bold, aggressive statement and, you know, potentially getting caught. And then the reverse of, of trying to call a big bluff is, you know, uh, it's more passive. It's not putting yourself out there as much as it's, it's actually trying to catch somebody else being over aggressive or uh, um, trying to trick you. Um, and so I've always, you know, in real life, kind of tended towards towards those kind of things or I shied away from putting myself out there in, in a sense. Um, I, I haven't had an aggressive personality. And so uh, I, I've known a lot of players that have the opposite problem. They love to bluff and they actually have to tone it down because they just love it too much. Um, and then some people who are afraid to call. One, another one that I've had is, you know, I, for some reason, you know, at some point, and actually, you know what, theory might actually now tell us that this is correct in a lot of spots, but um, I've been, I've always struggled to put in a lot of money on early streets without any equity. So, you know, when I have a draw of some kind, I can make big bluffs, but when I just have no pair, no draw. Sometimes you're supposed to bluff those hands. And sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you have the op option to bluff them all in. There was a, a very uh, specific hand, the most memorable hand I think that I've played. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that because I actually don't even know all the cards that, that, that were on the board and, and what I had. But essentially I was playing heads up for a bracelet and in, in, I think would have been the, the biggest win of my career tournament wise. And I... I check raise bluff the flop. I just had nothing at all. Um, I didn't have a great reason for it. I thought it was a good time too. This is back before uh, solvers and, and optimal play. Um, got called. I bet the turn on a turn that connected the board. So it was something like a like a, a jack seven X and the turn was a nine, let's say. And I just had nothing at all. I bet and my opponent min raised um, or uh, roughly min raised and had not much left behind. And I was just so confident that he didn't have anything. And I just did not believe him. But if I if I went all in and got called, I'd lose the pot. I had zero equity. And I'd never done that before. It only shoved with like a straight draw or a flush draw um, that, that even when I get called, I still have a chance to win. And so I tanked and tanked. And it was funny. It was on stream. And I'm, I probably look ridiculous sitting there thinking with no hand at all. But um, I really didn't think that 
that if I shoved, he would call, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I folded the hand, found out later he would have folded. I did not win that bracelet. It's the only second place that I have. Um, and it, it haunts me to this day. And so that's something that, that that's something that I've struggled with. Um, as far as how I've dealt with it uh, in general is I'm aware of it, uh, which I said is step one. And when I get into a spot, I, I am deciding to bluff river, let's say. Um, I will, as I'm thinking it through, I will say, oh, I don't, I, you know, to myself, of course, I don't, I don't think I should bluff here. And then I'll stop myself and I'll ask, okay, Phil, do you not think you should bluff here? Or do you not want to bluff here? Is it uncomfortable to bluff? And, um, and I think usually I do a pretty good job of checking myself and, and figuring out the, the, the real reason. Um, and this comes back to self-awareness, which I talk about a lot. Um, another thing I, I try to do is if I'm really unsure about a play, whether to take an aggressive action or not, and it's really close, being aware that I'm biased towards a more passive action, I will pick the more aggressive action because if I think it's close, it's more likely that I'm, that I'm erring on the passive side than the aggressive side. So it's really unlikely that the aggressive side will be a mistake. Um, so that's how I deal with it. I do think there are more things that you can do. Um, I've worked with, um, Elliot Rowe is a, is a hypnotherapist and poker coach. And I've worked with him on other things and actually not on this topic because, well, it just hasn't come up, but, but working with somebody, um, like him or, or other kind of mental game coaches to, to break through that is, is something that could be useful. Um, I think, you know, trying to, whenever you can think about things logically and maybe even drawing parallels in your mind to, you know, for, so the example I gave of, of not wanting to shove turn with zero equity, um, you know, if I go all in there and I get called, I have no chance to win the pot. If I'm on the river, and I go all in with a bluff and get called. I also have no chance to win the pot. But for some reason in my mind, it feels different when there's still a card to come or two cards to come or five cards to come. Although you can never have no equity with five cards to come. But it, but it feels different in my mind. And so I think I need to make myself in those spots think just about the math the same way that I would on the river. So, okay, I'm on the turn. I think I should shove this hand even though if I called, I can't win the hand. Okay, let's just pretend that I'm on the river and now think it through. Think, okay, well, I'm risking whatever, 6 million chips to win 4 million chips. So I have to be right this percentage of the time. Do I think I'm right that fraction of the time? Yes, okay, make the play. Um, so, so, so I think there are methods. I don't think I've done a an amazing job of this. Like I said, I haven't explored all the avenues, but I've done an okay job and that's where I'd start. Do you remember the first time you sat down at a live casino table and were you nervous? So, I mean, I, I played, I mean, yes, I was nervous, I, but I played at a casino before I played online. Um, and obviously it was different. Like the first time that I played in a kind of big live game compared to uh, after I played in big online games, um, I was definitely nervous, but I also, usually the kind of makeup of a live poker game compared to an online game of comparable stakes, um, usually it's a much easier game. And so, yes, I was nervous from a live perspective, but from, but, but that was kind of counteracted by the fact that, you know, uh, I, I thought the game was an easy game uh, for me to play in. The, um, it, it does, it makes me think of a good friend of mine from back in the day who was playing kind of the biggest games online. Um, his name was, uh, Z Dang still is. Uh, and he, he was, uh, he was one of the best in the world, played huge stakes. And I remember one time he sat down in Bobby's room, um, and I was in the same game as him and he, we were playing PLO, like 501k PLO, and he would... I don't know what you could see. He would, uh, so normally you'd like look at your cards like this, um, protect them over here, see the side of them like this. He would just pick up all four of his cards and look at them like this because he didn't, didn't know how to look at his cards. Um, and every, like everybody at the table laughed at him and most just assumed he didn't know what he was doing, but he was actually the best player at the table probably. 
Uh, so I always, I always remember that about his first live experience. How is it that so many high stakes players are friends with each other when your jobs are to take each other's money? It's never occurred to me that it's strange, you know, to, to be friends with my peers. And I don't know, I guess in a lot of industries, um, the people you work with are the people you work with, you're, you're not competing against each other. Um, but there are some where they are, whether it's in sports or I don't know, lawyers, um, things like that. I think the, I think when you're a professional, you know, what, what we do is we play a game and within the rules of that game, we can do whatever we want. There's nothing that is offensive or upsetting or personal, as long as you're playing within the rules of the game. Uh, now, obviously if you're cheating or angle shooting in some way that, that that's different and that can, you know, uh, damage a friendship to say the least. Uh, but you know, we all have a respect for each other and for the game. And if, you know, we all know that if, if when we sit down at the table, we're going to try as hard as we can. And I don't know, we're competing and, and it doesn't, uh, you know, away from the table, what happened it, it at the table just kind of goes away. Um, and so in that respect, I think we're, you know, colleagues like, like you might be in any other job. Um, and, and, and there's that separation between what happens within the game and what happens outside of the game. All right, that is it for Q and A today. Um, if you have some Q's, I may have some A's, uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll pick some that I, that I like or some that I don't like, I don't know. And, um, and record some more videos. Also, I would love to hear what you thought, um, what you think of kind of this type of video, um, suggestions for other types of content that you'd like to see from me. I'm, I'm figuring this out as I go and, uh, your feedback is going to be super valuable, uh, super valuable part of, of that process. Um, but otherwise I will see you next time. Take care.